Hello everyone, Alec Elder the SideQuest Gamer here, and when recording a podcast with my friend ADHD Gamer and Megadoop TV, they brought to my attention a video by the name of Under Network, or The Under Network. The title of it is Total Biscuit Has Cancer and Totally Deserves It, and boy does it have so many dislikes to the point where the like bar is pretty much non-existent. Rightfully so, and let's listen to what The Under Network spews out, shall we? Hello everyone, this is the Under Network here. Total Biscuit, also known as John Bain, deserves to get cancer. I have no sympathy for this guy whatsoever. And if you wanted to hit that dislike button, feel free to do so. I'm gonna bathe in your salty ass tears. Meh, yeah, why not? He gave me permission. And just jack off to it. Mmm, yeah. Ugh, yeah. Those delicious, dislike, salty tears. Because I have no sympathy for this guy whatsoever because he's a critic. And like all critics, they're all parasites. What is a critic? A critic is a low-life creature that lacks any talent or ability to contribute anything, yet chooses to verbally attack and put down the works of others. Through the usage of long words and general pretentiousness, they pretend to show intelligence and also to appear human like the rest of us. That does not match the dictionary definition of a critic, but go on! Hiding their true parasitic form. Everyone has is entitled to an opinion, but a critic makes it a business to state their opinion to everyone through the media or press, and to state their opinion as a fact. I like how you say everyone's entitled to an opinion, but if you interpret someone's criticism as fact, that's really your problem, not theirs. And yet you're saying someone deserves cancer despite you saying everyone's entitled to an opinion. I believe John Bain is one part of the everyone whole, but do go on. If you are a musician, a filmmaker, an artist, a writer, and you see a professional critic writing a review about you, you do the right thing and you shoot them in the face where they stand. If you want to know if a film or a band is any good, don't read the reviews. Ask a friend what they think. Or just do it yourself. But then your friend is the critic in the situation and by your logic would have to shoot them where they stand or that your friend would deserve cancer. In all seriousness, how is that any different than looking up a review from a critic? Just how? The friend, as well as yourself, is criticizing the music, game, or movie. Everyone criticizes something. That's just how humans work. Not only humans, but animals as well. Every complex species passes judgment in some way. So do 7 billion people deserve cancer or to be shot where they stand? See the problem with your logic? And to summarize from a personal quote I like to create, and the one that I like to use every single time when I discuss about a critic is that a critic is someone who fails at what they do. Total Biscuit has never developed a single fucking game in his life. Why do I want to take the opinion of someone else who has never developed a game, who has never been in the game industry, who has never doesn't even develop games for a living? Why should I take his opinion? Why? Because video games are meant to be fun and enjoyable. Critics talk about their level of enjoyment with the video game and talk about what they liked or disliked about a game so people don't accidentally buy a broken game that's neither fun nor enjoyable. And if you buy a broken game, unless you have a Steam refund, the developer has your money, your hard-earned $60 if you live in America. In America, minimum wage is like seven or eight dollars, which varies state to state. A full price game is sixty dollars. A sixty dollar game is like a day and a half's worth of pay if you work full time minimum wage. So for a lot of people, you better have so much fun with that full price game. And that's why we need critics, to sort out what they deem fun and what isn't fun. No one wants to be ripped off. You don't need to develop anything to like or dislike something. Say you had a glass cup that came in broken. Does that mean you have no right to criticize the leaky cup? Just because you're not a glass blower? And that's what pisses me off about the, the, the community with Total Biscuit is that they accept every single one of his opinions as a fact, even though he runs his mouth for about 30 minutes straight 
and you can and if you cannot even make a review in under 10 minutes you can you do not deserve the right to even be called a reviewer because it just goes to show you that you are unable incapable of dissecting or analyzing content or even measuring it in a way for people to understand in a short amount of time or even a decent amount of time to explain it in a way where it's actually worth their time. The length of a review is irrelevant, especially since different games require more or less of an analysis. With the games getting so much bigger, there is so much more to talk about. I get that some people just want to watch something short and sweet. I get that, but I argue that longer reviews have more to say regarding technical issues, controls, sound direction, graphics, and especially the gameplay, the most central part of the video game. Reviews should be elaborate as to when you make an argument, examples would best illustrate what you're talking about just to see what the consumer is about to get into. Therefore, winning the trust of the consumer. You want an analysis, yet you want something under 10 minutes. I'm not saying those would contradict, but an analysis would usually have to go in-depth into the video game, which sometimes require more than 10 minutes. What exactly do you want? I don't need a douchebag telling me for 30 minutes straight about what they think about something. When they don't even, when they're incapable of being objective of observing, measuring, dissecting, uh, understanding, or breaking down that information in an objective manner and making it in a way to understand for those that are unaware or ignorant about a certain form of knowledge or experience about something. Why, of course they're incapable of being objective. All reviews and opinions are subjective because it's based off one's personal enjoyment with a video game. H2O being the chemical composition of water isn't an objective statement because it's based on scientifically proven evidence. Saying something like the graphics don't look that good is based off someone's personal standards of what looks good and what looks bad. There's no such thing as an objective review. There's only a collective subjective preference known as the general consensus. Like everyone saying Bubsy 3D is one of the worst games of all time. But that is still a subjective stance. And with that final sentence before my interjection, isn't that what John Bain has been doing the whole time? You haven't given examples of how he failed at this other than like he never was a video game developer, which is a fallacious statement on its own merit. He's currently 31 years old, and he already has cancer. And it just goes to show you how it's nature's way of eliminating the weak-minded, the weak-willed, <laughs> the, the, the genetically inferior people off the face of this earth. He fucking deserves it. I have no sympathy for this guy. And if you want to dislike this video, feel free. I'm pretty sure you don't have to remind people to dislike the video, but in all seriousness, video games are data, right? People enjoy some of these pieces of data, and people don't like some of the other pieces of data, right? If you wish death upon someone who likes or dislikes a piece of data, then what kind of person are you? I mean, seriously, I can understand wishing death upon a murderer or a thief who ruined the lives of so many, but... Someone who did no harm other than give their opinion on a piece of data, that is just not cool. I pretty much don't give a shit. Somebody has to say it for what it is. And I cannot believe how there's so many cowards out there on the internet who don't call Total Biscuit for what he is a freaking parasite. Because he's not, and you haven't even given an example of how he's a metaphoric parasite to a metaphoric host. Look, I don't always agree with Mr. Bane on every one of his reviews. In fact, I am not even a huge fan of him, mainly because the things he reviews are things I'm not really interested in in the first place, like mostly PC games. Nothing against PC games, but those are not the games I'm really excited about and have to look up a review of. But I fail to see how he's a parasite, and you fail to explain how he's a parasite. With a toxic community that thinks that he is right. 
all the time and can never do no wrong. That's why Total Biscuit disabled all of the comments on his videos because it's just a one-sided argument. They're not allowed to discuss anything negative in his little safe space of his YouTube channel. People are going to say that, oh, he's because he doesn't like the, the Google comment system. Bull fucking shit. Leave the comments on. Just because somebody is writing a negative comment about you and you don't want to fucking hear it, it's not a lousy excuse to say that the YouTube comment system, the Google Plus comment system, is broken. And just have them completely disabled. Completely. Now the comments disabled is an underdeveloped fair point to why you may not like the guy. I mean if you develop that more I could actually give you credit for that. But the title of your video says he deserves cancer. With this point being included in the video it's as if you're saying that's one of the reasons why he deserves cancer. And censorship it's not a good reason to wish death upon someone. I'm sorry but it just isn't. And I was saying before, I have no sympathy for this guy, just like Roger Ebert, he deserves to get cancer just, just like every other freaking parasite on this planet. And Roger Ebert has never filmed a single movie in his life. And you want me to take his opinion about the films and the film industry? This, I'm telling you, you need to know the difference between a critic and an evaluator. And the difference between objective and subjective. With the exception of Roger Ebert somehow deserving to die just for giving his opinion on a film that people would have to pay money to see, you repeat so many of your points here. Why don't you just tell us your definition of objective versus subjective, as you seem to really love to play that card in this video. And, and I was saying before, it, it just pisses me off to the point where I just cannot put up with this. This is why... I don't like taking people's opinions. When I tell a person if they want to be able to buy a game or not, I tell it exactly for what it is. I tell them the positives and the negatives, the benefits of purchasing a game versus the negatives or the reper repercussions of purchase purchasing a game. The pros and cons. It's just that simple, man. This is a second grade level basics. Like mentality, rationality, and and if if he can't even do that, why even bother existing, man? And, and that's why, like I said, that's why he deserves to get cancer because he deserves to get eliminated off the face of this fucking earth. And I have no sympathy for this douchebag. In other words, what a review slash critic does for a living. So basically, everyone else but you and your friends deserves to get shot where they stand, or they deserve to get cancer, or nature should take them away, kill them off. What makes you any different than a reviewer or a critic? Those are the exact criteria a reviewer needs to meet. <sighs> Overall, this video was an abomination. While the gameplay footage is fine and all, his reasons as to why he thinks that Total Biscuit deserves to get cancer are highly ignorant, and the last part of where he puts himself on a pedestal are extremely weak, indicating major hypocrisy on his part. Why would you wish death upon someone for making a career on helping people make a purchasing decision so they wouldn't have to spend their hard-earned money on a garbage game? It's just a video game. I don't get how your reviews are any different as other than length. They're basically telling people what you like and dislike about a video game. You give your opinion on a video game just like a video game critic, just like a reviewer. I hate repeating my points here, but this video is just having that effect on me. <laughs> I wouldn't wish death upon my worst enemy, and really, you shouldn't either, because you're no freaking different than the rest of the reviewers, so don't act like it. I wouldn't even wish cancer upon you, but hope one someday you become a better person than what you currently are. As human beings, we are capable of change, and right now, you can really use the change. If you don't like him, that's perfectly fine. We're not all gonna like one another. If you don't like his opinions, if you don't find his opinions valid, that's also fine. But wishing death upon someone, just saying they deserve to get cancer, that's just not cool. That shows you really aren't a good person at heart, and you really need to change. But 
But that's just my opinion. Please don't send nature after me. Please don't. Although, at the rate of pollution, nature is kind of losing the war against human beings. But anyways, audience, I suggest you stay clear of this guy. Don't go to his channel and tell him to kill himself. Because then the abyss would stare back and you would become a monster just like he is currently. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this commentary slash response video, and I won't make many of these because it's not really my thing, but I just had to make this when I saw this video. And I apologize for the poor webcam footage, I just thought it'd be easier to use, and I'd rather show my face than display like a cartoon avatar because I don't want Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network to sue me. <laughs> But anyways, audience, remember to stay awesome and under network, don't be glad someone has a horrible disease. That's just not cool, man. Not cool.